Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Councillor at Large Wynn Farwell. Uh, to my left is Councillor Sue Nicastro from Ward 4. To my right is Councillor at Large Robert Sullivan, who is Chair of the Ordinance Committee. And to his right is Councillor Ann Borgat from Ward 5. This is the second open forum where we wanted people to have an opportunity to come in and tell councillors their recommendations, their suggestions, their comments about a brand new industry which is coming into Massachusetts and to Brockton, uh, namely the retail sales of marijuana products. Um, a couple of preliminary announcements. Uh, a, I am acutely aware that the Patriots game starts at 820, <laughs> as we all are. Uh, yeah. B, the restrooms, if needed, are out this door to my right and then diagonally off to your left. Uh, this evening, this is not a meeting. We are not a subcommittee of the City Council. We are simply councillors who enjoy getting feedback from people <laughs> about an important topic that affects the entire community. So we thank you for taking time out of your schedule and coming here. And uh, the only thing I would ask is that if you're going to speak, please come over to this uh, uh, microphone over here because that will pick up on Brockton Community Access. This is being taped. It will be shown at a later time. And we would like to give priority to the people who haven't had a chance to speak at the last forum. So if you were at the last forum and you spoke, uh, just kind of hang back until some other people who haven't had a chance to speak and then uh, come forward. I do want to acknowledge for the record that I have received a petition from Gary Leonard signed by people in the downtown Brockton area who are in favor of retail uh, marijuana uh, establishments. Uh, really? Obviously, they're not all here, but we thank uh, those who took time to sign that to give us information because ultimately we try to make decisions that reflect what the residents of the city want. It's not what we want individually, but we try to blend all of the information yes, together and come up with the best possible policy decision. So with that, I'm going to ask Councillor uh, Sullivan to say a few words. He's, he, he's kind of the chair of the meeting. I'm just window dressing. So. <laughs> Got a better tie than me tonight. Win. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thanks for being here tonight. And uh, again, it doesn't matter if you're pro or con. Uh, this is just us listening to you. Uh, I just want to make it clear for the record, we are not deliberating. We are not voting. We're not even engaging. We're just listening, much like the first very successful public forum. Uh, we're taking the information that you want to share to us, and then we'll go back and, and kind of delve through it a little bit. So. Appreciate you being here, and we definitely will be out of here by 8 o'clock tonight. There's no <laughs> if ands or buts on that. Thank you. Council? No. Thank you for coming this evening. Uh, we want to stress that some people, you know, are going to be watching this at a later date. We will accept emails, written letters, phone calls about your concerns and questions on this issue because tonight decisions aren't being made, but uh, how would I say, concerns and desires are being expressed. So thank you. And the council, and I would just stress uh, what everyone else said. There's no decisions tonight. There's no discussion from us. We want to hear from the public. And thank you all for coming. It is a busy night. And so we really appreciate your being here. Thank you. So I don't know who wants to start first. If there's anybody that would like to uh, to speak that hasn't uh, spoken in the previous one, please come up to the podium and make sure you've signed in if you could. Okay. Oh, good evening. Good evening. And thank you for allowing me to speak. I am not a resident of Brockton, so don't hold it against me. But I am a Patriot fan, so I'll make my <laughs> comments very brief. My name is Richard Stady. For the record, I'm an attorney. I'm a zoning attorney, and uh, I am working actually uh, with a few people who are trying to seek licenses in different communities. In fact, with humble modesty, I will say I was able to succeed in the town of Norwood in obtaining approval of a medical marijuana facility in Norwood. Could you just spell your last name, Absolutely. Sir? It's really Staiti. It's S-T-A-I-T-I. -I. Uh, I want my home address. Sure, it's, it's nine, 9 Burns Avenue, Canton, Mass, 02021. So I'm, I'm pleased that you're allowing me to speak and also because I have another meeting that I have to go to, so I'm going to make my comments brief and to the point. I've had the pleasure of watching and attending 
the many forums uh, that you have held, and I commend you for doing that and getting input. As a former public official in my own community, I know the process is difficult, and in terms of what you're trying to do, you're doing the best you can. Um, there are many sides to the marijuana issue. Uh, there are many uh, components that sometimes people get a little bit confused about. I will tell you both as an attorney though and as a, a town official in my own community, uh, we look at what we think is best for the town in terms of bringing in revenue, of course, but also making the site the best site possible. And I think that's where your direction's going. Uh, there are people here who do feel that it should be in some locations, you know, on the outskirts, and there are others who feel it should be in the downtown district. I would humbly submit that looking at in terms of what people are proposing and in terms of what the city could use, with humble modesty, I would submit perhaps the downtown area should need addressing and perhaps with the right safeguards, it could be something that would be very workable. Um, I heard at the last hearing too, and I, again, I'm not taking it to ask anybody, I think the intentions are well-meaning, but there are people who want to list all these regulations in terms of where you can put it and where you cannot. And frankly, that's where the community I was in actually got in a little bit of trouble. There's a danger, may I just suggest, in over-regulating. Okay, there's a danger in doing that. Again, you're an elected official. You have responsibilities to both the public and to what you're doing. But you, can't, you should not, I would say, and may not want to do too many boundaries and too many safeguards and too many limits. Because if you do that, what happens then, sometimes it feels that the, the, the test of perhaps legality at the attorney general's level. So, you know, in terms of some speakers before saying you can't be near different things like churches and schools and libraries, those all make sense. But you can allow them as long as you have certain boundaries. Perhaps it's five. 500 feet, perhaps it's 300 feet, perhaps it's 1,000 feet. Those are the things you can look at and evaluate. But the proto-prohibition, proto you know, which I was hearing at the last meeting, really isn't fair and I don't think would pass humbly the AG's test. Um, as I said, I'm working on behalf of some people who are looking to get the license process, so maybe perhaps I'll be before you again and I hope I'll be treated with some courtesy. But uh, I would hope that again, uh, the process goes smoothly for you. I know it's difficult. I know you're doing the right thing and getting input, but as I said, I think marijuana, looking at it in terms of a business, separating the, the issue that perhaps people who are for or against it, but in terms of business, does bring a tremendous amount of revenue. And, uh, and frankly, as I said, I know Norwood approved it, Sharon recently approved it, uh, that was a recreational facility, so Sharon's on the books approving it. You probably know that. There are other towns that are working towards it now in terms of growth facilities and also retail facilities, and medical's pretty much almost passe, if you will. It's almost like an accepted form. So I think you know, you're on the cutting edge of something, which is exciting. I think it's an exciting opportunity, and I think you should embrace that. And I think, I think you're taking the right approach. I wish you well, and I would sell, my, sell myself out as a resource. If you want my number, I'd be glad to help you and speak to you later. If you have any particular questions, I'd answer you, the council, and, and to the city as well. Could, could you state the number for the record? Uh, sure. You want my phone number? Sure. Absolutely. It's 781-575-1291. Uh, Thank you. All right. Now, I'm not off to watch the Patriots. I'm a <laughs> member of the Democratic Committee. I hope you don't hold it against me, but we're having an important meeting tonight about some ballot questions, so I've got to get back there. But I thank you for your courtesy and allowing me to speak, and I, I look forward to working with you down the road. Thank you. Thank you, okay? sir. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Next, next person I would like to speak, please. <clears throat> Good evening, board. How are you? Um, I basically just wanted to make some points, and I'm glad that he actually went first because he talked about some um, some revenue for the city, as you know, that uh, is badly needed here in the city of Brockton. Again, my name is Gary Keith. And your address? Um, what's that? Your address? 854 Belmont Street. And um, right now I have an article here to where Holyoke, Massachusetts, is ready to welcome uh, the marijuana industry with open arms. Now, their, excuse me, their mayor right now is taking total advantage of some of the old um, paper mills that were there in the city, and um, they're renovating them for the growth project there. So with the Holyoke growth operation, 150,000 square foot building would equal approximately 1,200 pounds per month, um, which will come to about 14,400 pounds per year. Now, each pound 
each pound will sell for about $2,000 to $2,500 per pound, and that equals $28.8 million, and at $2,500 a pound would equal $36 million. And with a 3% paid to the town would equal $850,000 to $1.1 million to the town of Holyoke. Now this reflects one growth, one growth operation. Now can you imagine if Brockton had 10 of these growth, growth offs? Um, never mind what the retail numbers would do for the city. So I'm speaking on that because of the fact that we have, um, I guess there will have been some talk about um, I-1 zones and whether we should go into I, um, I-2 zones. We have a lot of uh, old warehouses here from the shoe factories uh, down on um, uh, down in the village area there and over there on Perkins, off of Perkins Ave, things like that. These are, th these are ways to get in those buildings back onto the tax rolls, um, get them up and operating, have people taking responsibility for the property around it, beautifying it, and everything else. I believe that we're not really looking at the bigger picture um, because a lot of issues that we've been trying to do over the last few years, you know, to generate more revenue for the city of Brockton, a lot of opportunities have slipped through our hands, okay? Here's one that's here with us that's going to make money that's going to generate, you know, a lot, keeping people employed here in the city of Brockton, you know, teachers, firemen, police contracts coming up, whatever it may be. So I'm asking you to please look at um, trying to get some of those old buildings back up and running so we can beautify our city. And, uh, and again, another option is, is that I'm still looking, at, I'm in favor of uh, the downtown area also, as far as um, operating these shops out of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Jackie Murphy, look at 138 Tory Street. There. 138 Tory Street. Thank you. Well, as Wynn knows, I'm not a public speaker, and I'm not going to pretend to be. Um, I am, however, a resident of the city. Um, and in keeping with what Gary was just touching on, how often do you guys drive through the city? I know you're not supposed to answer this, so don't. Uh -huh. Every day. Yeah, every day. <laughs> okay. I, I have the pleasure, displeasure, of working down the Perkins Ave area, Station Street, Forest Street. There's some beautiful old buildings that are just sitting there. I don't know why we are proposing to limit to I-1 zones. Why are we looking to put, I understand the trepidation with the retail stores. I really and truly do. Though I don't necessarily agree, I understand your, your concern. Just, just as a point of correction, not a uh, informational. Uh, there is no limit on any one particular zone. We're, okay. we're, we're literally looking at zoning citywide. Where? Well, and you and I have talked about I one and I two. So. Yes, we have. Yeah, no but, idea. I, but I didn't want the public to think that we're, excuse me, focusing just on that. No, so. but it's been proposed that it go into no. I one zones uh, for grow ups in particular. Um, really? At least that's what I've been following. Um, just, I'm just kind of curious why we would not take advantage of the architecture and buildings that we have here in the city. Why we wouldn't like to revitalize downtown. For that matter, revitalize the city. I, I'm sure you guys saw yesterday. We have the dubious distinction as of yesterday of being the third most violent city in the state of Massachusetts according to FBI. What are we going to do to change perception? I mean, there's not business but beating down our doors to come in here. There's an industry now that's before us that if you guys do your jobs and your due diligence, you may actually see, we all may see, that we can have a resurgence in this city. By opening up to the opportunity for I-2s, you're opening up jobs. There's no bat bus that runs down Liberty Street. So you are now depending on somebody having a car to go work and to grow up. If something was down on Perkins Avenue or Main Street or Montello, you're looking at a totally different option. And you're looking at an industry that will hire within the city. Unlike the casino that 
a lot of the city got behind, that if you didn't have a 750 credit score, you wouldn't get a job interview. We have a huge opportunity to rewrite the city. I don't know if you guys agree. I know I hear, I, I've heard a lot of everybody's different sides of things, and I can appreciate them. I've lived here for 30 years. I came here voluntarily. I won't, I won't lie. I do feel I'm here against my will now. I work three jobs to live in this city, okay? I don't work three jobs to live in Cohasset or Manaman. I work three jobs to live in Brockton, Massachusetts. Again, the third most violent city in Massachusetts. If we have an opportunity to open the doors and we have six viable businesses that are looking to come in and give their tax dollars, renovate our buildings, why are, we, why are we even contemplating sending out to industrial parks and have buildings that have to potentially be built when we have them here in front of us? Again, I know you can't answer me, but my evening is about questions. Um, because I just, I'm at the point I don't understand. I don't understand why we are so resistant to business in this city. I know this is a little bit of a business that's out of everybody's box. I do. But as Gary said, look at what Holyoke just did. They're grabbing 150,000 square foot abandoned building and they're gonna turn it into a grow up. If we could grab the building or a company could grab a building, say down on Perkins Ave, what's to stop the relationship to that neighborhood? Where's the growth potential from that business to that neighborhood? First of all, it's gonna clean it up. It's not gonna be as blighted of a, of a street area as it's been in the past. Second of all, what kind of relationships will these companies voluntarily build with our schools? We've got a young man at the Ashfield School, I don't know if you saw the paper, that has got a hydroponics lab going mm -hmm. in the junior high school. Yeah. It's his second year, he has now got it that they're actually bringing the food into the cafeteria. And Chotwell is making the food that these kids are growing. What makes you think that we wouldn't get a grow up in that wants to partner with these, these kids and these schools and teach these kids? Not everything about marijuana is evil. I've never smoked it, probably never will. But I am involved in a community that does know its health benefits. These are benefits that we can bring to our kids. Brockton kids count, but yet every year we have a huge deficit. These six licenses, they can end the deficit, guys. You guys are in a position to rewrite history for this city. Rewrite what the streets look like, rewrite crime, rewrite education, bring the school systems back, bring the athletics back. Just ask you to keep an open mind when you're looking at your grow ups, your I ones, your I twos. Let's make this feasible and workable for everybody in this city. Not just people who have land that want to expand upon. We can help the city more by going into these old buildings than we can by putting them on the outskirts. And guys, I really sincerely thank you. This is great the second time you're doing this. I do appreciate it, and I thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. I guess it's my turn to hop up here, guys. I know you've heard me once already, but uh, I'm not going to talk about the retail part of it. I guess you got my message. Oh, Gary Leonard, 82 Bryan Drive, Brockton, Massachusetts, lifelong Brocktonian, father was a former city councilor sitting in the seats that you are now and I have a lot of uh, aspirations to do something good for my city and that's why I'm here um, again the retail I uh, just provided uh, councilor Farwell with a petition from property owners business owners and also employees that are downtown Brockton uh, due to the fact that it was mentioned that uh, I wasn't sure that if they really wanted it down there um, 
if I had more time, I would have went up to more businesses, but uh, that's all the time I had to, to get there, probably get 30 or 40 more signatures. I didn't get turned down by one business nor property owner. Uh, that all being said, uh, for downtown, I'm moving on to the wholesale part of the business. I know Holyoke has already been mentioned, about the 150,000 square foot, and again, that's just one person that's taking over one building, one grow up. Um, the numbers were uh, given to you. Uh, it generates anywhere from uh, uh, 25 million to 36 million uh, per year, and we're talking about just one grow up. Can you imagine if you had 10 of them in your city? And again, revitalizing these buildings uh, that Jackie was just talking about, yes, they might be occupied, but they're being used at, as warehouse space. They're not employing any people. Um, they're not gaining any equitable value. Um, and they're not uh, doing anything for the neighborhood. And most of all, are de detrimental to the neighborhoods. Um, this industry generates enough money where it would be required and I think this should be set up with a <coughs> marijuana advisory panel so they can uh, go around and research and find the good and the bad, how to um, improve, and some things uh, that uh, we might disapprove. But they make those decisions and then they um, submit it to the city council uh, who actually does a resolve and they implement some ordinances that can take place where funding can also be part of this. Uh, last March, I, uh, attorney uh, Stady that just uh, was here a little while ago, um, submitted a host agreement over and above what the city's host agreement would be. Um, the company that I represent, which is Natural Agricultural Products, was willing to give the city of Brockton $1 million after its first fiscal year in business, give $100,000 to the um, senior center, for the expansion and renovation of that facility um, and also run an ambassador program downtown so people could feel safe and maybe we can change our perception and image so people would be more happy to come down. But again, if it's downtown, um, it's making people come through the city into the center, which means they might have to stop for a loaf of bread, uh, maybe get some gas, or God forbid it, even maybe have lunch uh, downtown or dinner. Um, this would be um, vital to this downtown area. And also by having uh, these storefronts open, by requiring that all retail sales be done on the second floor level or below grade, uh, leaving those storefronts open, um, there's many reasons why, and one is for capitalism to take over, so uh, other businesses like restaurants, boutiques, um, sh uh, small uh, shops, uh, you name it, they'll, they'll come in, they'll fulfill them, and if they don't, um, it's going to be easy enough for the um, companies that own the retail shops to obtain them to sell uh, probably paraphernalia. Um, it, it, we'll probably do that within the retail shops anyway, so we would have probably, when it is approved, mass infused, uh, marijuana infused products being sold, some not sold. Um, they could take their pick if it's a bakery. You can buy products that are infused, or you can buy products that aren't infused. But I've seen this firsthand by uh, myself when I flew out to Boulder. Um, of course, when I first went, I didn't think I was going to be uh, <laughs> satisfied to the point where I was actually going to be on board with this. Um, it actually changed my whole attitude, and that's why strongly I'm here today, and I keep coming to these meetings because the mayor of Boulder, Colorado, really sold me on this. They've embraced it. Uh, they were all on board, the city council, and they really went to town, and they're using everything to its highest and best use, and that's what I feel the city of Brockton should do. So again, um, I appreciate you having these forums, and I hope you take uh, what I've said today into consideration. Uh, there's a lot into this. There's a lot of revenue streams that we, we could talk about all night. Um, the street entertainers, the permittings, uh, there's all kinds of revenue streams that the city can benefit from this. But um, today, two licenses were approved in the uh, western part of the state. Um, they're ready to rock and roll, and I think uh, we should be prepared uh, as soon as the state uh, has the testing facilities ready to test the grow ops, because remember, it's gonna take three months just to grow the product, and that's done from seed right on up into flowering and budding. So. 
that's another three months that goes by without uh, the city obtaining any money. And the way that I have it figured out, uh, each year, each month that we procrastinate, we're losing anywhere from 750000 to $1 million each and every month. So that uh, I hope you take into consideration, and I thank you for letting me speak this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, may I just suggest, anyone who has not done so, we'd love you to sign in. Okay. And there are sign-in sheets right here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Phil Ritchie, 15 Hall Street. Uh, Hall Street. Hall Street. Uh, I'm a trustee of one of these old mills, 100,000 foot, and uh, in 10 years we've never been able to fill it, and it's mostly the people that are in it are storage, um, household goods, things like that, and I believe that. Okay. Yeah. I'm my building as well as many Excuse others. Excuse me, sir. Where is it located, please? Uh, 53 Spock Street. Okay. Would uh, this industry would help my building? And <coughs> from what I understand, they would have to do a quite a bit of renovation, hire plumbers, mm -hmm. carpenters, electricians, which I do now, but I only do it in a piecemeal way. This would be a major renovation to these buildings, and uh, the outside would be done. And the security that they're talking about adding would enhance the neighborhood because of the gang problems. I have graffiti gang problems almost uh, every month over there, break-ins and that type of thing. So the outside security that they're going to install with cameras and security guards would uh, not only help my building, but the whole neighborhood as far as uh, being an outside presence. So I just, I just want to reiterate that an I-2 uh, building zone where most of the old mills are located uh, would really help the building owners and the neighborhoods that they're located in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeremy Marcellus, 38 Nelson Drive. Uh, I am a returning Brightonian. Uh, I was raised here in Brighton up until I was about 12 years old. Jeremy, that's in Randolph, right? Yes, Randolph. 38 Nelson Drive, Randolph, Massachusetts, yes. Returning <coughs> Brightonian. So mm -hmm. there are just a few different uh, bases I want to touch this evening. Uh, starting off from a medical point of view, uh, I work as an addiction therapist, or an addiction therapist. Uh, an addiction nurse. I have over 10 years of working with Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous and things of that nature. Um, I just really want to focus on, I don't know, I guess removing some of the stigma that we have with marijuana right now. I personally have seen the benefits of, benefits of it with some of my patients who are addicted to drugs. You find that the marijuana actually helps them address specifically like their depression and or anxiety and that in turn allows them to make a lot of headway in terms of by getting at, to the, getting at to the root of their addiction. Um, so from that point of view, I think marijuana is going to be a great opportunity for the city to take advantage of. And I think it's going to help us tremendously in terms of, um, I don't know, really stopping a lot of the unnecessary deaths that have happened. You know, last, last summer I had the pleasure of going over to the Rock Stadium. They had, they had this amazing event. I can't remember the name of it. I think it was, a, I think it was called the Night for Recovery, you know, and we had open air area for people to come out and discuss their addiction and, and, and get help out in the public. And I've been in this field now since my entire adult life, which is over 15 years. You know, and I never thought I would see the day where I would see people openly discussing their addiction, openly uh, discussing their ways they can treat it with not just medical professionals, but police officers, with DEA. <laughs> you know, we're finally at a stage now where we can really help a lot of people. And I really feel that marijuana is going to be uh, a great tool that we use when we're fighting addiction. And the uh, second point I want to make, uh, as, a as a returning Brightonian, I'm very concerned about the downtown area because I would love to move and possibly buy a place down there, but it's not very, it's not very attractive, you know. Um, I happen to, as a nurse, I work throughout this, throughout this state, 
And right now I'm doing a lot of work primarily in Boston, you know, and I, the, down, the downtown area of Boston speaks for itself. But, you know, you're not even downtown Boston. You could go to a place like Mission Hill, you know, go areas mm -hmm. of Dorchester, sure. you know. Nice. Uh, one of the things I notice about the, a lot of the people in this town who are really, I like it. you're busy, you work here, you live out here, you really never get to go outside. If I, if I, if I were to say to you guys, what's the last time you went to South Korea? Mm -hmm. Probably 20, 30 years ago. No. Take a trip last down. week. See the developments. Last week. You know, <laughs> you saw it last week. You know, it's yeah. really beautiful. Yes, it and, is. And the thing that concerns me as a returning Bartonian, you know, which takes me to my next point in terms of business, is I, I, I have the opportunity where I meet a lot of people with a lot of investors. And when they say, Jeremy, we would love to do business with, business with you, we would love to come to a city like Brockton, but if it wasn't for you, we'd never even be talking about Brockton. You know, we'd be talking about a place like Holyoke. You know, we've talked about a place, even like Braintree, you know, that's aside from the marijuana stuff. That's just people coming in with money who want to invest and do the right thing when they invest in here. You know, because when I say to them, hey, you know, I'll take your money, but I'm not going to take money from anybody. I'm taking you back to my home. I'm taking you back to my city. I care about these people. I know it's like when, you know, the, when not, not the best businessmen or women come into a town and they wreak havoc. So I can appreciate that. But on the flip side, we can't shut the door on everybody just because they're not from here. You know, we really can't. And fortunately, from my point of view as a returning by Tony, which is one of the reasons I love this city is, we don't need the outsiders. We have plenty of people in this city who care enough about this city who want to see what gets, who want to see the best for this city. Whether they serve here with you guys on city council, or they work in our public schools, or they work in our medical field and our, in our hospitals, they genuinely care about this city. But at the same time, they're not gonna necessarily throw their money away. I have a lot of friends who work here in Brockton, but say they wouldn't live in Brockton. In this day and age, who doesn't want to work where they live, you know? And mm -hmm. I just want to say, as a returning broad Tony, I really care about this city genuinely. No matter what I do in my life, I'll always do my best to represent this city in a bright light. However, I think we really are, we're, risk, we're risking miss, missing a major opportunity here. You know, because some of the stuff I read, all the different businesses that have tried to come through here, try to develop, and just got turned away. I mean, come on, not everyone's a bad guy. <laughs> you know, you can't, like I heard, Apparently, uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but through a casual conversation yesterday, I overheard that the Walmart that's over in Avon originally pitched to be here in Brockton, and they're basically sitting around the other side of the border. Mm -hmm. And true. everyone in Brockton that's goes true. to yeah. that Walmart. <laughs> yeah. You know, now I don't know too much about the business deal. I don't know why that deal possibly fell through, but if that's true, <laughs> I mean, that's ridiculous. When you put that alongside, you hear about the stories of the casino or whatever. All these different opportunities where their city could have benefited from a major industry and or business, and for, for whatever reason, we, we passed on it or fell through. I just really don't want to see that happen with this city, and good luck to you guys, and I hope you guys come to the right decision when it comes to everything. Thank, Thank you, you very much for my time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good evening. Good evening. Tony Gonzalez, 154 Fairview Avenue. So I really thank the other speakers before me because it's some insight that I wasn't thinking of. And I stood here before you in the past and said that some people just need more education around this industry because it's definitely something the city of Brockton needs and we need to take advantage of it. We haven't talked about all of the jobs it's going to bring and especially to the downtown area if, these, if this is where the stores are located. It's going to bring accountants, administrators, managers, security officers, drivers. And I was just informed recently, NAP, which is, in, they have intentions of applying for licenses, their starting position starts at $17 an hour. That's a starting position for jobs for the residents of Brockton. So not only is it gonna bring jobs with good pay for the residents of Brockton, but also the income that the city needs to help the schools. My son goes to West Junior School, West Middle School, and there's no air conditioning. It's freezing in the winter. These schools need renovations. You know, the teachers can't afford any more pink slips. So these are all very good reasons why we need to move forward on this sooner than later for our kids, for the residents of Brockton, and the city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
How's everyone tonight? I'm Lynn Smith. I live at 34 Carl Avenue in Brockton. I'm downwind from the facilities on Perkins Avenue, and on a good day, I can smell the candy that they make in the yes. factories there. I know that uh, marijuana is going to come to Brockton, and I know you folks are tasked with ordinances or conditions to try to manage the business so that in a public setting, maybe the folks on the marijuana side are a little mad, and maybe the folks on the public side are a little mad. And that's probably a good compromise. So I'll just point out to you that in the Holyoke experience, one of the facilities there, the 150,000 square foot facilities, the permit had conditions attached to it. So for example, there was a condition that the facility would always pay the full extent of commercial taxes. So the question then arises, gee, I wonder if that means that there are no abatements or there's no request allowed you know, for any type of um, adjustments to the taxes uh, made. There was also a special um, request that 30% of the employees be Holyoke residents. They anticipated that after the first year of operation, this $150,000 facility would have about 15 full-time employees. And so they wanted to make sure that jobs were put aside for Holyoke folks. They also asked that any security jobs, that preference be given to either Holyoke police retired or veterans retired that were in military um, policing or po retired police from other communities. So there was a condition suggested in terms of security. Um, and then the obvious, no marijuana consumption on site. And there were also restrictions about no deliveries to homes. And then the hours of operation were restricted. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday. So my concern is that ordinances are put into place to help the public and protect the public. I mentioned the last time, that's why a barber has to get a license, that's why a plumber has to get a license, it's to protect the um, public. And you know that my position is that a buffer zone be considered to the fullest extent possible. Uh, in California, I believe the minimum buffer zone is 600 feet, and I know we have been talking about 500 to 1,000. And we've talked at other meetings about protecting schools and libraries and YMCA and churches and that type of thing. So that I hope that the ordinance committee will consider the best possible buffer zones that will help the city manage this new business um, and also make the new business a good neighbor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Side out, Brockton. And I'm not native to Brockton. I'm one of the transplants that came to this city, made a choice to come to this city, and I love the city as much as anybody that's lived here all their lives. Uh, so my concern is for the city as a whole. And you will never find me say that the city does not need money because <laughs> it needs lots of money but it's how we're going to get it. And I have some grave concerns over the methodology and particularly of putting uh, so many um, marijuana retail shops in one particular area. Mm -hmm. uh, tonight I've been able to provide to the city councilors uh, some maps from the Brockton Police and District Attorney's Office that illustrates over the last three years where the hot spots are for gun violence and narcotics arrests. And when you look at it and see the darker blue, it's exactly in the area where we want to put the 
uh, marijuana shops downtown. That's the, one of the worst areas. Uh, so that's a, that's a concern. Uh, also, in a meeting with Safe Streets the other day, the DA's office shared with a number of clergy uh, an interesting fact that kind of surprised me. Um, I had made a statement a while back saying that uh, I have a concern of people coming from outside of Brockton, buying their marijuana here, mm -hmm. and then sampling it when they get in their cars, and then driving on our streets, endangering our children and our lives. And I was pretty much laughed down on that. But their statistics show that 51% of all drug overdoses in the city of Brockton are from people from outside mm -hmm. of Brockton that come into Brockton to buy their drugs then sample it and OD here in Brockton. Mm -hmm. I was surprised that number was so high. And so this is a reality that could repeat itself if we make marijuana available readily in one particular area uh, of the city. Also, as we've mentioned about buffer zones, and that's pretty much every uh, state has done this, every community has done this that's dealing with marijuana shops. Uh, many of the states have taken a thousand foot, some take 500. Uh, in, in Massachusetts we have 500 foot is regulated, but some communities have decided to even lessen that, and that's their business. Here in Brockton, mm -hmm. we need to protect these special places where our children are, particularly the schools, uh, the places of worship, uh, parks. Uh, the YMCA, the libraries, all these places where children congregate on a regular basis, we need to make sure that they're protected. Now, uh, someone used the term uh, whether it would pass the muster with the uh, AG's office. Well, some communities have already, in Massachusetts, extended the uh, buffer zone to 1,000 feet for essentially everything in town, and I think they listed one 500 foot from any residential area uh, so that they wouldn't eliminate the whole place. Uh, we are doing that. I'm working with the, the state GIS system, trying to figure out where we could have these things. And I've actually found a few locations in the city of Rockton where we could hold these thousand foot buffer zones and still have some of these businesses in viable areas that uh, have good traffic flow now well, except at certain times of the day because there are certain times you just can't go anywhere in Brockton. But uh, they have parking and all that. So, you know, we want to make sure that uh, when we do this, and I think this was the Ordinance Committee's uh, uh, comment, was that we want to make sure we get it right. And it's going to take a lot of research to be able to get it right. And so it's very important for us to make sure that we know where all these uh, pre-existing places are, where all the places of worship are, where all the schools are, both public and private, mm -hmm. to make sure that we have a protected buffer around them. Yes, it's, it's real. We need to have money come into the city. We are going to have marijuana shops. I acknowledge that. I accept it. It's going to bring in some revenue. You won't find me frequenting it. You won't find me frequenting the, the medical marijuana uh, facilities either. Although doctors have told me that I'm a perfect candidate for it, but I'm just not going to do it. So I won't be there, but I know there are other people that will go to these places, will generate the income, but we just need to make sure that they're in safe places and that regulations are there, not to over-regulate, but to protect the citizens of Brockton, particularly our children. And I know it was just said there, uh, a few moments ago by somebody that every month that passes we're losing between 750000 and a million dollars of revenue to the city. But I also, looking at what it's costing other places in America in liabilities, insurance claims, because of accidents and damage and, and crime in their areas, we're actually saving 750000 to a million dollars a month right mm -hmm. now in not these li having these liabilities. So. Um, I, you know, I see folks shaking their head, that's fine, you know, I can read the numbers, you can read the numbers, we have to interpret those numbers, and, you know, I am not an economist, but I understand business, have been in business for 35 years, I understand how it works, I can read the reports coming out of these other states and what they're seeing, and 
we're just not agreeing on how the number should be interpreted. And again, uh, I'm thankful that the city councilors have taken up their time and want to hear from the public and being part of that public and someone that loves Brockton, I thank you for having uh, allowing me to speak here tonight and uh, present you with the materials. Thank you. Hi. Uh, my name is Leanne Roman. I'm from 840 County Street in Taunton. I used to live in Brockton all my life, but um, after hearing the last gentleman speak, I wanted to get up and say something because I believe that there is a stigma that goes along with marijuana, and I am a marijuana smoker. I do not drive under the influence of marijuana. I know many people that do smoke marijuana. I smoke it for anxiety, for depression. I smoke it for insomnia. I smoke it recreationally as well. Um, there are, you're going to abuse things no matter what, whether it be food, alcohol. Alcohol, how many alcohol stores do we have here in, in Brockton? How many people abuse alcohol and drive and crash their cars? Uh, it's just, the stigma that I, I heard being talked about is looking down on people like I'm a bum, I'm gonna hang out in front of the marijuana shop and just you know cause a ruckus and cause problems, try to give my marijuana to children, get in my car and smoke marijuana. Um, I'm a real estate agent, I am an office manager, I run five companies for my boss, I'm an upstanding citizen. I moved out of Brockton because it got so bad. The rents were so high. It got ridiculous. And I love Brockton. I grew. I was born here. I grew up here for 30 years, and it just got to the point where I couldn't take it. Um, I don't talk to any of my family because of all of opioid addiction. Yeah, all of them are addicted to opioids, and it's not the same. And that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Felicia Colson. I live at 21 Hancock Street. I don't have statistics. I don't have none of that stuff. I live here. I work here. My children live here. My grandson goes to this school. And I'm not totally against the whole marijuana thing. I just don't want it in my neighborhood. <laughs> I don't want it around the corner from where I live. And, and that's what it, I live on Hancock Street. I, this is in my area. I don't want it in my area. There's a lot going on in Brockton. There's a lot of drugs. Listen, I, I get the whole medicinal marijuana thing, but it's already too many drugs out here. If you're gonna have a clinic somewhere, maybe up at the mall in an in industrial type of setting, not in the residential, areas that's what I'm totally against because I don't want it around the corner from my house I don't want people coming around the corner from my house because they need marijuana because their back hurts or whatever they have a headache I don't want that in my neighborhood so that's all I just had to say that thank you thank, thank you, you. Anybody else? Oh, oh thank you, thank you. Dennis Hersey, 7 Kenwood Street, Brockton. 40 years, just retired as a physical education health teacher. I've had numerous courses on all types of drugs. I had to teach health education for 25 years. Mm -hmm. There's nothing good to the, that goes into the human body about marijuana, okay? Now, marijuana has already been, the law has already been passed, as this gentleman spoke last week. It makes him feel good. People who have medical problems, anybody who has a medical problem can go to their doctor and get a prescription and go smoke marijuana, get their marijuana and go home. But it is not good for you. It can cause cancer, it can cause other problems to the human body, all right? Now, violent crime, I think this lady misquoted. 
we're the third most violent city in the state. The mayor has come up many, many times and said crime is going down in this city. Those are his quote. Okay, well, I, I don't know. Either either the mayor's misinformed or, or you are. I don't know. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna get into who said she said, okay? All right, so health factor is big. I don't know how anybody can even, you know, we're talking about money, money, money. It's gonna bring revenue, no question. But do we bring it in at the, at the expense of little children, of churches? I don't know anybody with any Christian values at all can say it only has to be 500 feet from a church and 500 feet from a school. Come on. Of course it should be 1,000 feet from schools and churches and daycares, libraries. Absolutely it should be. And of course it should be buffer zones. We're gonna have six of them. So two people here are gonna be owning two of them, okay? So why can't they, as, as Pastor Reed said of the North Pastor's Church, he's got places in Brockton, the council's gonna find places in Brockton where you can put these things. But it's absolute ludicrousy to put it near churches, to put it near children. And I really mean it, it's absolute ludicrousy. And some people have heard it all over said the fix is in, Joe Angel's always gonna get one, the Marion Brothers are gonna get one. Uh, but it, it's just crazy, all right? to even think about putting it downtown. And anybody here who had money, you're gonna open a nice restaurant uh, or a nice clothing store, would you really put one beside a pot shop that's gonna be opening up? Come on, let's, let's be realistic. Some people, okay, are, are quoting all these, all these money and all these things, this isn't gonna happen and that isn't gonna happen. You know what? It's like they're waving a magic wand. They're waving a, a magic wand, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, but at what expense? At what expense to the children, to the senior citizens, to the churches? I think it's very disrespectful to God, the Christians, and I'm not a strong Christian, but I do have Christian values. I would never disrespect the church, never. I would never disrespect little children and put them beside little children. This is appalling to even think that way and associate that way. Some of these people got all these money they're gonna bring. They, they can wave the magic wand here and, and, and do it. But what's gonna happen if they're wrong two years from now? And we got pot shops right near schools. We got pot shops right near churches, and they're wrong. I, I'm not Jeremiah the prophet. I can't predict it, okay? And neither can any city council either here predict, okay, exactly how much money we're gonna make. But for God's sakes, protect the children, protect the churches, protect the daycares, protect the libraries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan Owens, 21 Longwood Ave. I uh, was just called out. Sorry, what, what did you Ryan Owens, 21 Sorry. Longwood Ave. I think I was just called out, so I uh, have to uh, say a few <laughs> words. Um, I don't know about what was the personal reference, but there's absolutely zero fix that Joe Angelo's getting a license. I'm the one that's leading that front. I am doing all the diligence I can, and it is not easy. Um, along the way, I'm leading in forging relationships that are integral to having a successful uh, endeavor. Um, there's still major concern over the viability, particularly if there are shops put on the outskirts and I'm downtown all by myself. Uh, there's a constituency that will not want to come there, no matter how good the product at the price point that I can present it at. Um, I referenced briefly last time that I uh, left the corporate world. Um, simply with the notion as lofty and ridiculous as it sounds, is to change the world. Well, that can be done on a grand scale or just really on a small measure. I can say that getting into this industry, I see there's a lot of change happening. Um, while there is absolutely a stigma again, associated with smoking marijuana, um, getting high, there's definitely a number of people that do that that just want to get high. There's a huge uh, portion of the population that do that really for you know, treatment of certain physical, emotional, mental ailments. Where this industry is going is going to be far um, different from where it is now. Everybody that I'm talking to, they're all super excited, as am I, for the CBDs. I'm also a minority owner in a company, a startup in North Carolina, who is a CBD producer. Um, you know, they have contracts with all the farmers down there, and they're going to be producing the oils, the terpenes, the, all the products that you need to then put it on a retail shelf. 
give that medicinal um, dosage to you know that person, that customer. Uh, it really could apply to almost every one of us. I understand your hesitancy, gentlemen, uh, sir. We're not wanting to take any, but there's so little side effects. There's so many ways and ailments that it does treat. Um, talking to somebody just yesterday, so I'm going to be in business with. He's buying land in Col uh, Columbia to start operations down there, get a CBD produ production company there to then export. I mean, this is going to go global. He's more afraid of when Africa figures this out in five, ten years and just floods the market. So there's a lot of change coming. It's not about getting high. It's about being treated without having synthetics from the pharmaceuticals. You can understand where it comes from. It can be organic. It's been around for thousands of years. Well, my additional concern and want is the revenue that um, the city is going to be get to be spent the most appropriate way. It's a lot harder to fix an adult than it is to build a kid. And if you can, you know, bring money back to the schools for sports, you know, that's getting slashed, the arts. You know, there's so many different things that have been sort of cut out of the scholastic program that, you know, can build a much better person. After school programs, again, I'm mentoring, I volunteer. I do have to dash from here to go to a mentor meeting. It's an open house that uh, starts tonight. But there's a lot of ways that I think um, society itself can change for the better. And, and some of those simple measures of just making sure the next generation has all the tools that they need. They're not on the streets, they're not getting involved with gangs. They have a focus, they have peer advisement, whether it's mentor or just good family structures that allow them to become a better overall citizen of the world, a productive adult. You know, the trickle down Reaganomics, that has been proven time coming and it does not work. But rising tides raise all ships and it really starts with raising the lowest socioeconomic class that, um, that's around everywhere. And how you guys as a city and the mayor itself build that budget, I'm not sure. But I'll tell you one thing, I probably do a lot of it much, much different. That said, I'd like to announce my candidacy for counselor at large in 2027. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Jeremy Marcellus, 38 Nelson Drive, Randolph, Massachusetts. I just want to touch base on a couple of things that were said after I spoke, um, specifically how we change the narrative here about marijuana being being called a drug and an addictive substance, which it is not. Um, first and foremost, if you want, if anyone ever wants to base their ideas about marijuana and its drug and medicine in general, a professional tip as someone who works in the medical field, um, I have to update myself with my knowledge every two years when I renew my nursing license. Correct. Um, so it's very important that I stay up to date with the most appropriate reading materials and things of that nature. So if anyone is basing their information when they say, you know, marijuana is a drug or it's addict or it causes addiction and things of that nature, nature, I really hope that you're not basing that inf information on stuff you've been you were taught 40 or 50 years ago, and really just update yourself at the very least what's going on over the past five years. And for anyone who wants to read up on it, I recommend you read up on Dr. David Behrman. He is a doctor out of California who has over 40 years of addiction therapy uh, in general, aside from his experience, which is 40 plus years, um, using marijuana in his treatment and things of that nature. Um, that's all I just wanted to say. I just hope everyone is, I, I'm sure everybody wants to do the right thing. I just want to make sure that they go into the right resources when they get information before they say things like marijuana leads to people killing other people or addiction and things of that nature. I, Again, first-hand knowledge, seeing it with my own patients, I've seen people use this as a drug, as, as a substance to help them treat their addiction. You know, And I just really, really hope people understand that. And, and again, to say that it's a drug, caffeine is a drug, you know? Caffeine works on your brain the same way 
same way, uh, for example, heroin does. It releases dopamine. You know, um, if tomorrow, if they were to ban caffeine, how many of us would have to go through withdrawals? Would we be referred to as drug addicts then? You know, no, we wouldn't be. You know, so just be careful because a drug may be a drug, but understand what that actual drug does works, how it works in your body, how it works in your brain. You know, and marijuana in and of itself, itself does not work on the, same, on the brain the same way something like heroin does. Hence why it doesn't become addictive. Marcellus, I, 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 just as a point of information, I don't think it's called a drug for derogatory reasons. Mm -hmm. I think it's still because it's illegal at the oh, federal course, level, which of course. Is, is different than obviously alcohol. And oh, of course. So I, I, that's, that's just my impression. Oh, of course. It, it's I, a legal I, term. Of course. I, I agree with you there 100%. It's just that when people use it in a certain tone in a certain way within the context, marijuana is a drug that leads to addiction. No, absolutely not. Marijuana, correct statement is, marijuana is a drug that, if anything, helps you if you are addicted to something else. And I'll, I'll end it there. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? I just to Keith, you want to follow up? Yes. Okay. The, um, what I wanted to say basically is that, you know, we're looking at um, the revenue that's going to bring in and basically we're cleaning up some blight and everything in the city. One of the words that you've always used, Mr. Sullivan, uh, whenever you run a campaign, you talk about Brockton is your home is my home is our home. Yep. Now, I have only been in Brockton somewhere close to 30 years. I, I lost count, 28 to 30 years. <clears throat> but since I've been here, basically each year the city has gone down, lost revenue, you know, and everything else, not get losing businesses and things like that. You guys, yourself being a lifelong Bronctonian, you've seen Brockton. At his at his beauty days, in his, you know, when downtown was bustling, when uh, you had theaters, or uh, I'm not sure about the theaters itself, but I'm not that old, Mr. King. <laughs> <laughs> My parents saw the theaters. I didn't see the theaters. I said I don't know. I was at the Westgate Mall Theater. I, I was here when the dinosaurs roamed around. <laughs> but, but, uh, you get my gist. You get my gist, though. That you guys have seen. Rocked in his glory days. Okay, for us that do live here and love our city, which is why we're here right now, we would like the opportunity to see a better Brockton. We would like an opportunity for our kids to see a future here in Brockton. You know, down to uh, like someone mentioned the school sports and things like that, keeping our kids engaged and things like that. Someone also mentioned about um, people buying marijuana and pulling over to smoke it and things like that you know, in OD and you can't compare the two, okay, if to a person that's basically coming into Brockton to buy heroin. They have a very, very bad habit, okay, and will do anything to fix that habit, which means that as soon as they get that, uh, that heroin, they do have to pull over, okay, and take that fix because they can't wait any longer. No one, we don't, I don't think there's any record on the book anywhere where someone has robbed, stole, and killed to buy marijuana. It doesn't do that to people. Now, I'm not a doctor, but I do know uh, a lot of people that smoke marijuana. And I've never heard of anyone, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that this never happened for whatever reason, but that's an individual situation. But I'm not going in there. I'm not going there right now with that. What I am going into is that you guys had, I'm kind of jealous right now, because you guys had that opportunity to see a, a better Brockton. And we would like to see that too. And I think that this, uh, Will actually help us get there. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wants to have a follow up or anybody else want to offer anything new? Okay. Uh, Phil Ritchie, 15 Hall Street. Phil Ritchie, okay. Um, I just want to repeat that if a grow operation was in an I 2 zone, you would never know it was there. If it was in my I building agree. on the third or fourth floor, you could have a school across the street, and the children would never know that it was there because it's going to be blocked off, order control. Employees will come into the building, park, just like any other business. So I think a grow operation is, is not a detriment uh, to the neighborhood and would not affect schools and playgrounds and libraries because it would just be like a shoe factory. People can't come in Brockton. They used to 
come down from the three families, go, go to the shoe factory, go home for lunch, come back down again. <laughs> thousands and thousands of people worked in these buildings. And now we have a chance to revitalize them, get, get these hundreds of thousands of square feet back. I have 30,000 feet ready to go right now for somebody to come in. And uh, I just hope that you'll consider the I-2 zone. And just a point for my own personal reference, the biggest drug in this city sold on every street corner is sugar. <laughs> sugar is going to bankrupt Medicare in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilors, I just have one other thing to say. Uh, they were, uh, people have been up here talking about their lifelong Brocktonians and only been here for 30 years. And again, it is important to know that I've been here for 64 years in the city of Brockton. Um, I remember when Brockton was bustling. I remember having to walk on the street down Main Street because the sidewalks were filled with people pushing their kids in carriages and mom and pops just in window shoppers. My two grandmothers lived at 23 Tremont Street down in Campello and they used to walk downtown every single day because they used to window shop. And thank God I have longevity on my side because they lived to be almost 100 years old. So I guess that kept them in good shape. But being a lifelong Brocktonian, I was hearing here about people talking about coming in and out of Brockton, other people coming into Brockton and ODing and things like this. Um, I think we need to know that we're not on the same playing field. Um, as Richard Reed had said, um, you know, I, I was a neighbor of Richard's for quite a few years. I lived on North Main Street, right on the Avon Brockton line, where Richard's church is. And, I think Richard would say I was a good neighbor because I used to always go over and make sure and police the area because my father owned the house that almost abutted his church. So um, again, I pay a lot of taxes. I've been paying taxes. I've owned property since I've been 18 years old. And I've owned a lot of property. Not all maybe here in the city of Brockton, but I've owned a lot of property here in the city of Brockton, probably over 50 buildings uh, in my lifetime, in my career. Um, I don't think Richard can say the same because the church does not pay taxes and I doubt very much if the parsonage pays tax taxes. They might. He, he probably employs maybe two or three people in his church. We're talking uh, uh, about employing hundreds of Brocktonians and that's part of my requirement. My employees are going to be Brocktonian people and if they don't live in Brockton now, they're going to have two years to move to Brockton. I'm almost putting a stipulation in there to cripple myself, but I don't think it's a crippling. I think we're building our city, and that's what I'm here to do. I have a love for my city, and that's why I want the model to be the successful model that's already been proven. I mean, I'll make money no matter where I go, but that's selfish. I love my city, and I want to see it grow, and I want to see it prosper, and I want to see it sparkle like it, like it used to back in my day. And that's really all I need to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me have a double dose here. <laughs> First of all, as a high school teacher, health teacher, physical education teacher, I know kids who got hooked on marijuana. I know, oh, I'm telling you, okay? Now you can't say that because I lived it, I, I taught it. Now I am gonna say this about marijuana. It's, no, it's a proven fact that it doesn't lead to harder drugs. That is true, it doesn't lead to harder drugs. But kids can get hooked on it. And there have been a lot of criminal acts with marijuana, bad drug deals, bad sale deals. There have been armed robberies. There's been murders over marijuana. Come on. Don't, don't think it's a wonderful thing. Now, it will be better controlled when you start selling it inside the pot shops. No question about that. But if I, I, I'm having a hard time right now understanding one thing that was said. If we are the third most violent city in Brockton, why do we want him here? And why is the mayor continually saying the crime rate in Brockton is down? Violent crime is down. So something's not right here with that. And uh, medicinal purposes, you know, you got, a, you got a medical problem. If it eases your pain, you can go to your doctor and get a prescription. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with somebody smoking marijuana in their own home. Now, is it gonna, can you smell it 500 feet away? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You're going to be able to. So I'm going to say, because we have five city councilors on, that, on the ordinance committee, 
please keep it away from children, keep it away from churches, and keep it away from daycares, libraries, protect them. And I don't know why somebody has an issue, it's federal law, about churches not paying taxes. That's federal law, and I'm glad churches don't have to pay taxes because they save a lot of lives and they help a lot of people, and a lot of poor people go to church and that's the only thing they have. They only have hope. And that's, you know, and we gotta let them have hope. So if they would have to pay taxes, you'd be closing down probably three quarters of the churches in the city of Brockton. So here, here they're not paying taxes, and thanks, I'm glad the federal government has decided that the churches don't have to pay taxes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. Thank you. Anybody else? Again, uh, we, we collectively want to thank you. A lot of you are repeats. Uh, you've taken two nights out of your, uh, your lives to come here. It's very valuable. Again, I said at the beginning, pro and con. It's, it's a healthy conversation. Everyone was professional. And that's really the intent that we wanted to have. So again, thank you so much. And we really appreciate it. I hope you all have a good evening. Thank you. Remember, you can always forward emails or letters or give us a call if there's something that someone hasn't said or wish they had or for those listening, watching. <laughs>